Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India mentioned that uh, in the case of bandigraph accelerators the uh, ions were produced inside the terminal where the power to produce these ions was coming from the motion of the pulley uh, high voltage pulley and that is moving that is rotating at a fixed speed therefore power was limited and as a consequence of that in Roughly in all the Van de Graaff accelerators, only protons and HE plus ions could be produced. Now, um, any experiments or any research will should not be restricted to only protons and uh, HE plus. Even high, uh, heavy ions should be accelerated and they should be available for it. And therefore, how it could be done, and it was done. A, a new kind of accelerator was uh, built and there instead of just having one this accelerating column you add one more column so two columns one is this is column and another is column so that means with the same high voltage you can get two times in the case of singly negative ions singly ions you can get two times energy but as I mentioned that if the charge state could be larger, then even the energy could be higher. So here it is. Now the problem which will come here is that this is a positive potential and therefore if you want to use this, then it has to be Coulomb attraction. It can be accelerated only, for example, this is, let's say this is first column, this is second column. And if the ions have to be accelerated to ground potential or some, or some energy to this, then this cannot be accelerated unless the polarity is also reversed. So in the case of uh, tandem accelerators, the particles are injected as negative ions instead of positive ions. So you can see that the particles, this is an ion source and then ion source uh, the ions are uh, analyzed for a particular mass in charge here and then they are injected into the first column section, this one and till that time they are negative and this is, uh, uh, they are attracted by Coulomb potential by this, uh, this high voltage terminal and they are accelerated to this. Now you see, here it was Coulomb attraction, so that is why they were, they were uh, accelerated from this potential to this potential. Now, if it remains negative ions, they will not go out because they will be attracted further by this high voltage terminal, which is a positive potential. So therefore, inside this high voltage uh, uh, terminal, the polarity has to be changed. And that is what is done. In this case, inside the high voltage terminal, a, a unit called a stripper unit, is installed and a stripper unit could be either carbon foils or it could be some gas, mainly inert gas and when the beam passes through that then there is an interaction, there is collisions and these negative ions lose lot of electrons, it could be, it could be one loss, uh, one electron loss or it could be many. For example, in the case of uh, let's say oxygen, even all the all the, the electrons are stripped and then it will be 8 plus and of course how many electrons will be lost will depend upon with what energy these ions negative ions are coming so it depends upon and that will depend on the voltage on the high voltage, high voltage terminal so at high volt high energies or high voltages many more electrons can be removed 
and much higher charge state ions can be uh, produced and then they are now they are positive ions and therefore they will be repelled by this high voltage and the repelling will be the energy will be charge state times V and therefore in the second uh, second column section or second accelerator so it uh, second accelerators much higher energy can be achieved and that is the advantage in the case of tandem accelerators that you can get much higher energies secondly heavy ice beams you can get thirdly that uh, because the ion source is sitting at the ground potential not in the terminal and therefore uh, you can give uh, any amount of power to the ion source to create negative ions of anything so in fact the negative ions of uh, uh, right from proton to uranium they have been produced they have been accelerated and uh, there is no problem so this is the tandem accelerator but tandem accelerator is still uh, the uh, for charging the voltage on the terminal raising the voltage uh, is still the uh, bench charge was used in the case of tandem accelerator and in the case of uh, belt what happens uh, that you know that comb is there and comb will have sharp surface as a consequence of there will be sputtering of the of the of the uh, belt and uh, because of, and some lints will also form as a consequence of that there will be a electric field will not be uniform across the across the belt and that will give a problem and that will can uh, increase the uncertainty in the voltage because the charge transfer will not be uniform and this uh, problem was solved in the case of peloton which i will be discussing little later so in the case of tandem accelerator basically you can see the energy here is e in that means the energy of the ion which is coming out of the ion source let's say it is e in and when it enters in the first column section uh, in the first column section it is singly negative ions so it is uh, one times the uh, e v and in the second electron suppose the charge state is uh, in the second column section the, because the charge state formed uh, here in the stripper, stripper system is n plus therefore it will be additional n into e b and therefore the total energy becomes n plus 1 times e and that could be much higher now from the ion source here normally the voltage is used to extract the ions are in the range of 30 to 100 kV and therefore uh, now suppose you take let's say let's say oxygen I am just as an example oxygen and let's say this E in is very small 30 kV as compared to uh, several million volts so I neglect it so it energy becomes n plus 1 into E this meant m now oxygen if you take had it been Betty graph, then it could have been only singly plus. So the energy, let's say in the case of 10 MB, the energy could have been only 10 MB. While in the case of uh, tandem accelerator for oxygen, all the eight electrons can be removed at 10 MB, 10 to 12 MB, and then the energy will be 8 plus 1, 1, 1 times in the first one and 8 times in the second one so it will be 9 times the 10 so it becomes 90 MBB so you can see what was only 10 MBB in the case of Wendy graph now you will be able to get 90 MBB oxygen 8 plus beam so a lot of new experiments can be done with this and of course after that uh, you analyze it for the energy and then you uh, Correct it also if there is too much fluctuation you can give a feedback and then you can stabilize the voltage. After that you this is a this is a switching magnet where the beam could be uh, thrown into the analyzed uh, 
beam can be deflected into various beam lines where experiments can be done. So this is this is ten. Now the as I mentioned that in the case of uh, tandem, kinetic energies can be much higher and it uses two, two uh, column sections and you can see here, this for the sake of uh, demonstration, we are seeing that we built one 2 MBB tandem accelerator here completely indigenously and you can see that this is the uh, first column section. You can see that this is first column section. You can see here both the column section. So ions coming from this side, they are accelerated, negative ions. They are accelerated up to this place to 2 million volts. Then they are converted into positive ions and they are further accelerated. And this is the pressure vessel. The whole thing is put inside this at about uh, 230 PSI so that the high voltages could be. Okay. Now, uh, depending upon how accurately you form the accelerating tube, accelerating tube is nothing but a set of electrodes plus the insulating gaps in between and uh, that is built here you can see. So these accelerating tubes have become a specialized atom and uh, depending upon how accurately you form this the voltage gradients could be much higher as compared to the ones which were used earlier and so you can see this accelerating tube is one of the most critical component in the accelerator whether it is a bending graph or any other accelerator and uh, uh, one thing is that uh, uh, there has to be ultra high vacuum inside this and that will be decided by what kind of uh, joining is there and what kind of insulators are used between electrodes and uh, what kind of material is used for joining. So that will decide the what, what kind of vacuum system you can achieve because there the degassing will take place and uh, you can uh, so this is a special item and, uh, and uh, performance of the accelerator will also depend uh, what, how accurately and how nicely you can make the... In order to avoid the uh, electron scattering, uh, different kind of electrodes are separately put and uh, they will not allow this uh, uh, electrons to hit the insulators and uh, therefore the life of, of the accelerating tube will be uh, normally in present day accelerators a gradient of uh, or the a gradient of about 1 million volts per meter in this at room temperature are easily available and uh, they can be obtained. So these tubes are constructed of insulating material commonly they are ceramic because the degassing is much less or the glass with vacuum tight seals to metal plate electrodes. Vacuum seals are extremely critical in view of the high uh, external uh, gas pressures of up to even tube. See this, this uh, accelerating tube is installed inside the column section. Now inside is uh, vacuum many times 10 power minus 9 to 10 power minus 10 torr but outside is a pressure because uh, you need uh, insulation from outside also so you can see that both the concepts are used inside it is a high vacuum outside it is a high pressure and this ceiling uh, of the accelerating tube has to extend both high vacuum and high pressure the electrodes are connected to equipotential rings in the voltage generator columns to maintain the uniform potential distribution. Because for focusing the beam, it is uh, very important to have accurate, uh, accurate beam dis uh, this voltage distribution. Not only uh, you have to worry about uh, uh, fields or the voltages, but also you have to see that the electrodes 
for the entire accelerating tube components they are not subjected to high particle radiation and that has to be taken care of and uh, one of the thing which you have to take care of is that the electron suppression has to be there so that these electrons don't hit the don't hit the uh, this uh, insulators and therefore the one should minimize the secondary electron emission by applying this electric materials so these are some of the things which you have to take care now as i mentioned that in the case of uh, uh, tandem accelerators we were using the belt for charging and uh, uh, belt has difficulties for example uh, charge uh, transfer may not be uniform and therefore uh, in order to improve that an another modification was done and the accelerator which is uh, uh, where this modification was applied is called peloton accelerator so in this case peloton accelerator what is done uh, is that this belt is replaced by a pellet chain and this pellet chain is uh, is made of uh, uh metal uh, pellets coupled with the uh, with the insulators and this uh, peloton charging chain which is uh, advantageous over the uh, tandem accelerator was developed by her uh, and his collaborators in national electrostatic corporation in usa in 1960s or so and this is a much this uh, has improved the charging efficiency and voltage stability considerably over the over older van de graaff or even the tandem accelerator and therefore in peloton accelerators you can get uh, uh, much better stability voltage wise and hence the uh, energy uh, as compared to the tandem the belt suffered from the number of operational difficulties including terminal voltage instability and susceptibility to a spark uh, as i said that uh, because of that high voltage corona needles or uh, mass uh, sharp surfaces were formed on the belt and therefore uh, those uh, belts uh, were, were subjected to sparkings and those things are avoided in the case of uh, peloton because uh, pellets which carry the charge they are uh, conductors and therefore charge will be uniform over and there will not be any spark there is no voltage gradient or there is no electric field over there so all all the all the uh, all the pellets will have uh, roughly similar charge and the chain is more durable because there are no sparking so they are durable durable than the belts and they don't produce any sparkings as a consequence of that uh, terminal voltage stability is much better it it eliminated the best belt dust so this was one more serious problem in the case of van de graaff as well as tandem accelerators that uh, because of those sparkings on the belt there was dust formed and those dust will pick up the uh, pick up the charge and they themselves become say source of uh, uh, high voltages local high voltages and so dust problem is solved in the case of uh, peloton chain doesn't limit ultimate terminal potential and it is uh, in use in electrostatic accelerators up to about uh, 30 million volts Uh, here, uh, their operational uh, accelerator has been built with 30 million volts in France, Strasbourg, and that is uh, routinely operates at 25 million volts. You can see that in India also we have two peloton accelerators. One is 14 uni peloton. at uh, 14 ud peloton at tiapa tata institute of fundamental research mumbai and that is in operational for more than 25 20 years now 
a similar kind of uh, accelerator with the 15 UD. UD is uh, uh, that they are nicknamed. These are both supplied by NEC, National Electrostatic Corporation. And 14 UD is uh, able to go to 16 million volts. This is at IUSC, Inter University Accelerator Center, and New Delhi. And uh, the line diagram of this uh, is shown here. The negative ions from the ion source are mass analyzed and they are injected into the first, uh, first uh, column section. They are accelerated up to the high voltage terminal where the negative ions are converted into positive ions and then they are further accelerated and then there are of course the several beam lines where the experiments are done. These pellet chains, uh, which is the biggest improvement of uh, a pellet on over tandem, they are made up of uh, metal, metal pellets connected by insulating nylon links. And metal pellets or the plates are charged using the effect of uh, inference in the electric field. That is called induction charging. See, this uh, is not, you are not putting any surface, uh, sharp surface there. They are done by induction charging. And that is the biggest ad uh, advantage here. And this is a much more accurate, much more efficient way of uh, transferring the charge, uh, charging the system. For positive charging, the electric field between the negatively biased inductor electrode and the pulley pushes electrons off the pellet while they are in connect contact with the ground. Since the pellets are still inside the electric field as they leave the pulley, they retain the net charge, positive charge, and that charge is transferred in the similar way into the to the terminal. So this, as I, uh, there is another advantage in the case of uh, pellets that uh, uh, while the pellet chain is moving up, it carries positive ion. While uh, in making a special arrangement in the terminal, you can also uh, transfer the negative charge to the pellet chain and that is possible and therefore this, this uh, pellet chain uh, is able to transfer the double, char double charge two times. You can see here that pellet chains are made of uh, pellets. You can see here. You can see here these are pellets and they are connected by this. And the uh, uh, point to note is that there is an electrode here and that induces the charge onto these pellets and that is transferred to this. And there is no sharp surface, uh, there is no sharp comb or anything involved, it is by induction. So that is a much better way of doing it. Now it is going up here, so it is charging here. Now then there is a pickup pulley here. And that pickup pulley, uh, see here the voltage applied was minus 50 kV for example. So when the positive, uh, the negative voltage is applied, it transfers the charge, it induces the charge, which is positive onto the pellets. Here that positive, some part of this, uh, this charge is picked up by this and then there is an electrode here, uh, which becomes positive. And so it just takes the reverse of that here. And this remaining charge, which is almost uh, almost uh, very small charge is picked up here. So most of the charge is going there. And that charge is by similar system is transferred to this, which is connected to the high voltage terminal. While returning this pellet chain, uh, this is positively charged. So in, by induction, a negative charge will be generated. And then the uh, is suppressor uh, electrode is also put here so that there is no spark. So you see the positive charge is going here, negative charge is coming here. So it gets uh, two times voltage on the, or charge here on this one. So that is the advantage. 
and since there is no sparking and uh, so the voltage stability can be much better uh, in the case of peloton accelerators so most of the present day accelerators are the peloton type and they are able to give uh, much better stability beam stability and more accurate experiments can be done then see that uh, uh, there are several advantages of peloton over that so i'll just uh, i've listed here the typical charging currents are in the order of 100 uh, to 300 microampere very small charging current is required high voltages up to 30 million volts have been achieved have been reached and uh, the, that accelerator at stars work in uh, france is routinely available for 25 to 30 million volts the terminal voltage can be regulated and controlled by varying the charging voltage between the inductor and the suppressor electrodes and pulleys charging voltage in the range of uh, 50 to 100 kV is required the charging chain for the high voltage generation exhibit good voltage stability that is the biggest advantage for example at 14 million volts a few kV, 1 to 2 kV can be achieved. For example, at, uh, at uh, Mumbai Peloton, it's a 14 million volts, and uh, the voltage stability or energy stability of about uh, 1 to 2 kV could be achieved. Similar uh, energy stability at 16 million volts of Delhi Peloton. So they are highly reliable. And uh, since there is no sparking or anything, their life also becomes uh, uh, bigger, uh, much larger as compared to the... Thank you. Thank you very much.